What is going on guys? We are back here in the shop. I'm working solo today, so hopefully we can get some good progress. If not, there will be another day when I have more help very soon. So we are in the shop today. We've got a couple of slight changes that we might be making to what we're gonna be doing with this. Um, I've gotten a lot of quotes, and what it comes down to is this. I need a structure, essentially in the summer, if I only had concrete and I just left the doors open, I'd have enough lighting. As you can see, there's enough lighting and I'd have a nice floor to be able to work on projects, stuff like that. But when it comes to the winter, I need to be able to keep this thing as warm as possible because it is gonna be very cold. We're over here in central to north central Ohio, more north than central. The winters aren't like horrible, but they do get pretty cold, decent amount of snow, and this thing, it's just got to, you know, it's, it's gotta, it's gotta stay warm, otherwise it's gonna be miserable out here. Having the concrete flooring will make it way easier than what I used to do. At the previous place, it was working in the driveway, we're on a dirt floor, we're on rubber bats, like no heating, no nothing, just layer up in a snowsuit, get out there, work on the stuff, and that was just kind of what I was used to. But I'm trying to make it as comfortable as I can without completely rebuilding this entire building, because it's not even like my green building anyways, it's just, gonna serve a good purpose while I need it. And then hopefully the goal would be to at some point schedule to have my actual ideal shop space built. So this barn, for an update for everybody that doesn't know, it's a 30 by 40. So it's enough for three or four pickups in here, two to work on them comfortably. You can have one on this side, one on the other side. And you know, if your pickup truck, assuming it's as wide as it can be and it's a super wide 10 foot you know, dually on the rear end, you could still have two of those parked in here side by side and just enough room to get around them you know, with a few, few feet of extra space on each side of the trucks and in between. So it's gonna be good for what I needed to do for the time being. Get the lighting back here. It's gonna serve a good purpose, but it's just, it's not my ideal shop um, long term and it's an old building. It's 25 plus years old. It was built in the mid 90s. So I mean, it's, it's an older structure. I mean, these guys are talking like early to late fall before anybody can get out here. Other than a concrete guy, I did find some concrete guys. A couple of them, one said he could get in here next week, another one said two weeks, another one said a month out, which isn't bad because concrete's a fairly quick process. But like in terms of construction, actual construction construction is like booked. Everybody's like booked. And the quotes that I did get to redo this shop the way that they would recommend, I mean, they're talking like twenty-five to $35,000 to redo everything the way they would suggest doing it so you get it all done once the right way and you don't have to mess with it anymore, which is cool except for the fact that I don't want to spend thirty dollars to $35,000 in an unideal shop design that long-term is not, like, it's just long-term not, not a good design for me. I'd rather have the shop long ways and have the bay doors, like, you know, along the walls like that so I could have you know, a garage door per vehicle I have pulled in at a time to be able to pull stuff in and out without having to move anything else in the shop. That would be my ideal setup, like an actual automotive workshop style space, not, you know, an old pole barn with the doors and the gable ends. Like I said, it'll totally work. It'll still be a better space than what I had back home where we used to live. But it's, if I'm going to put that kind of money into it, I'm saying, I'd rather just build a whole new shop for a few thousand bucks more. But to completely reconstruct this one between demolition and reconstruction. Everybody I've talked to, they're like, we'd rather just build a brand new one than revamp this. And it's not gonna like save you money really because by the time you factor in all the labor for demolition and reconstruction, it'd be way simpler to just build a new one from the ground up and not have to spend all the time tearing everything down to rebuild stuff. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. So what I'm thinking about doing for now is going a little bit different route and I'm trying to see on a little bit of a budget how I can reconstruct this myself between just myself, other than the concrete work. I'm not gonna do the concrete myself. I have a guy that said he can do it for a pretty darn good price, and he said he can get out here like ASAP and get it done for me because he knows how important it is to my business and what I gotta do. And we're holding off on some other projects because we don't have any concrete. It's kind of hard to move jacks around and stuff when you don't have concrete. We did that before and it just sucked. I want to be able to have this all done so I can pull something in and out of the weather and actually be able to have space to work around it and do stuff. It'll just be so much better. I'm super pumped. Even concrete alone would be a better setup than what I had before. I'm excited for this. Do I want to put that much money into a building that is not the ideal setup as it is? Just to have a really nice version of an unideal setup? Not really. As much as I'd love to have the whole roof replaced, to have it all steel 
and have everything done and all new trusses and all this other stuff. I also talked to a few friends and some other people that, you know, I showed this to and they're like, you know, it's not like, it's obviously not perfect. It's, it's a 25 year old building, but if it's still standing and those are all the original ones that they did, it, it's probably going to be fine, especially if you could, you know, reinforce some of the structure that's already there and just to, you know, just to solid things up a little bit, make it a little better. That way you don't have to worry about that. Make it function for what you got to do. Make it to where you can hang your steel on the ceiling, steal the walls, and then, you know, run your electric, reseal your doors and stuff so everything at least holds heat well. And on that note, all I'd really have to do to seal this door off, because there's like an inch and a half gap up top is just get new trim, which I want to do black trim around the windows and the doors and everything. Get new trim and then get those weather strips that seal off all the way around the door to keep the breeze from blowing in and out. And then the concrete is gonna fill the bottom gap. And then in terms of the man doors, I've already got the lumber to replace all this junk around here to get that swapped out. And so there's some options to do it on a way smaller scale to be able to make this totally functional for like a third of the price if I just do it myself and I don't go with redoing literally everything, which again, sounds awesome. But you know, the guy I was talking to yesterday, you know, he had some good points of like, you can put as much money into this as you want. But at the end of the day, to make it what you're wanting to be like perfectly ideal is still gonna be mostly ideal except for your shop doors aren't gonna be set up in an ideal fashion and you're gonna have almost the price of a brand new shop with an old structure, which is fine if that's the route you wanna go. It's, you know, the walls and everything, everything's straight, everything's square. It's just a matter of how much money do you wanna put into it. Yeah, I'm still kinda of torn on that, but let's just get to work on, on all the things that I know I'm gonna to have to do and just kinda of see where things go, set the time lapse up, I talk too much, so. Let's get this going. An obsession, all in this possession. You got the retention. I leave an impression and take a redemption. Just kill no discretion. Your mind is a weapon. 11 11, it's time for progression. Oh! You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody and stain from the people who deceive me. Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me. People like sheep move feet, hurt it easy. You don't wanna be fast asleep when they ski. Better stand tall, ready for a fight, believe me. So he's been looking for somebody who could save him Instead of searching inside for what they gave him A strong will, strong mind causes mayhem We could change the world, change times, rearrange them Staying on pace, running the race Life is a chase, I don't want a place I want to be first, work till it hurts Dehydrated thirst till I'm in a hearse oh. High ambitions in the right mind can take you so far It's like you lived a few lifetimes Take off from a break off from the weak minds They can stay soft, you can change lives, you create thoughts Never waste time, you got one shot, you got one life Better pop off, what do you like? Make a dream job No 9-5, no mean boss, just my life and free thoughts You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody and stain from the people who deceive me Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me People like sheep move feet, hurt it easy You don't wanna be fast asleep when they ski Better stay tall, ready for a fight, believe me When they try the chains, you can say no, free Next me Next day, I didn't finish the video yesterday because a Bunch of different things, camera died, ran out of material, ran out of screws Ran out of, well the ability to span boards all across a long distance and hold them level. But I'm gonna go through some of the stuff that we got done in this video and then you guys can kinda, you know, let me know. Let me know what you think of the progress. Essentially, the mission with the shop is to, at as low of a cost as we can, get it as functional as possible. So there, of course, are gonna be a lot of things that they are just gonna take some time, but we're gonna get them done. Like the trim pieces around all here, I want it to be all black. I don't want it to be like this cream color because they had extras from the house and then they threw them on the barn. So I want it to be black and white for the barn theme. And then uh, we got to replace the board here, just like the one up top and on the side. Those ones are fine, but we got to match it up with the same board over here. Put that black trim, weather guards. I reframed out the door essentially because all the boards were rotten. I'll show you those. Here's one of them. You can see how bad that was. For now, I just drilled a hole to 
put this latch through. Because that's currently the only way to keep it closed. So on the inside you can see the framing. I put a, one of these salvaged two by fours that we cut the nails off on and then framed it out. And then I put some two by fours spaced 24 inches apart down the sides. And the reason for that is, if I can get this door to stay out of my way, because we're eventually, of course, you're gonna have to put tin around the inside of the barn. So I just figured I'd throw that up so that was done. And then I run around the entire barn and I pulled out all the electrical boxes from the walls, like where it was nailed in, except for a couple places to keep it out of the way. Um, but I did that so that when I run my two by fours across the interior to tack the interior tin to. The cool thing is gonna be that the electrical is kind of loose and out of the way because I don't know if we're gonna be able to reuse all that or if it's all gonna have to be replaced. So I just figured I'd pop the nails out of all the boxes and wherever I'm throwing up boards, you know, pop the wiring loose so that way it's, you know, it can be moved around if it needs to be. And then I did throw up a two by four across the top from where the roof line of the interior is gonna be over that way as well. Um, and that's gonna be fairly, fairly accurate to the top of that two by four is essentially where the ceiling line will probably end up being. And then I just kind of boxed around this electrical box with plenty of room to get around it. You know, if you have to get a screwdriver in there to get wiring loosened up and whatever. If you had to pull the box, you could. And then I'm not done. I just, again, I ran out of materials because I was going to frame that out the rest of the way. That way we still have material to fasten our tin to surrounding that, but there's plenty of room around it to work with it if you got to pull it out and replace it or something like that. And something that I noticed with this barn that I, I didn't notice before, and I don't know if this is normal or not. To me, it kind of seems like a little bit odd, but you know, it, it is what it is. I don't, I don't really know um, why they did it. So these posts are not completely symmetrical. It's a four by six, which is a, is, which is a normal post dimension. I mean, four by sixes are common, but the only problem that I see, which there's remedies to it, it's not like the end of the world, but they have the posts running down the sides of the walls here with the wide side facing into the barn, the narrow four inch side, you know, long ways along the wall. And then at the very ends, if you see that, they flip the post and then it's the wide side facing the four by four side as a remedy to just kind of test a theory. The only problem is when you're running your two by fours in the interior from here along and they're all sitting four inches from the, uh, and they're all sitting four inches from the inner two by fours here. If you want it to be flush and perfect and have no like sway in the wall, you can't just tack the board onto that six inch deep part of the post if the rest of them are tacked into the four inch portion because then you're gonna have a little bit of extra sway um, if that makes if that makes sense. I mean, you guys who are contractors, you guys probably have a way better remedy for this. I don't really know what to do about it because I figured if I did a two by four in here, it's the same width as these posts right here or dang near the exact same. So if you hold that two by four there, it perfectly covers that post. So my thoughts were if I did that perfectly flush to the back side of this, it would give me the real area of where I should be tacking that two by four to this running on the interior so I can keep the wall flush. But then I added these on this side so that when I've got this two by four, let me show you another example. So when I've got this two by four mounted like so to be the proper spacing of four inches all the way along the wall so it's all flush, I still have surface area to tack as well for the walls running that direction. So if you guys have a better remedy for that other than piecing two by four scraps that I had around here like that, you give something to fasten to. I did fasten these into the wall with four inch, um, into the post with four inch screws to make sure that those pieces were very, very solid. But if you guys have a better, a better remedy and you guys who know what you're doing, please let me know down in the comments because n none of this is final until the tin is hanging anyway. So if we have to make a couple quick adjustments on the corners to fasten them a different way, all for it. I'm not gonna turn down any good advice on that. Once we have the concrete in, we can essentially tin this interior and my biggest thing that I want to try to figure out is how to tin 
the ceiling without adding extra stress to the roof. I guess you would call them stick built rafters, uh, trusses. It's not traditional for a pole barn to be built like that. It's an old building. It's, it was built in the mid nineties. It's old, but it functions. My thoughts are what exactly do you guys suggest in terms of a solution to be able to have a nice flush ceiling to hang tin on. This is arced of course because it goes up and then it's flush and then it goes down. This is OSB sheeting on the roof, shingled, so it's heavy, and then it's just nailed on with these two by eights on edge and then two by fours stretching that big span just tacked. I mean, the building's been here for a long time and it's still still here. <laughs> and that looks like all the original lumber. It's all, it all is aged. It's not rotten, but it's aged. What would you guys suggest as a remedy to be able to set the support, like to set the weight of that tin roof with blown in insulation to support that kind of weight? What would you guys suggest? Would there be an, a way to span something from sitting on top on edge, kind of like those two bites there, on edge from this wall to that wall, is there a way to create something that can go that span so we can have a nice flush, flat, straight ceiling from one end to the other? We're gonna be reinforcing some of that bracing that they made or some of those rafters before we button it all up. My dad's gonna come up and we're gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna have a couple other guys take a look at it too. Just kinda see, like give us some extra ideas on how we should add some additional bracing to that potentially before we box it all in and then it, you know, it's gonna be harder once it's all a giant attic up there. How we wanna do that to be able to have a nice safe ceiling but not adding a bunch of extra stress to an old roof, you know, by adding a bunch of tin and blown in insulation, you know, you then you get a bunch of snow this winter on top of the roof. I just don't know how far I should push my luck with the old roof um, in terms of adding stress to it. So that's why I was asking if there's a good solution to make that whole span across, which the barn's 30 feet wide. 40 feet long, is there a good remedy to make that span with a bunch of super long boards, like two by sixes or eights on edge, fastened to the bases of these homemade rafters, but also like tacked down to that headboard up there. Can they make that span on edge and fasten with some more lumber tying into the roof structure for stability and would that work or is that a really bad idea? This is your final week and final chance to get entered to win this compound turbo 12 valve Cummins plus $5,000 in cash. And right now our max entry multiplier for this entire giveaway is live, which is 15 times bonus entry. So every $1 you spend is gonna get you 15 entries towards winning that truck, plus that $5,000 cash. But in addition to that, we are gonna be picking two random customers every single day from now until the last day as a thank you and giving them $50 in a Visa card or if you have PayPal, I can just PayPal it to you, whatever's easiest, but if you don't, put it on a Visa, mail it to you or send it to you digitally so you can use it on whatever you want. And that is simply as a thank you to our customers who come back again and again and again. So we're gonna be doing that to random $50 winners every single day from now until June 3rd, the last day of this giveaway, which is in about a week. And guys, this is your max entry multiplier. It's the last week to enter. You're getting entered to win the truck, and every day now we're gonna give away two $50 either Visa cards or just PayPal directly to two random customers who place orders each day. It's a new drawing each day, so like, Today we did a drawing for two customers who placed orders yesterday. And then tomorrow morning we're gonna draw two customers who placed orders on today. And then the day after that we're gonna choose two customers who placed orders the day before. That's kind of what we're doing as a little thank you, just drawing some random customers and sending them some money. So anyways guys, lots of perks, getting her to win. Giveaway's almost over. Somebody's gotta take home that compound turbo 12 out plus the five grand. That somebody could be you. Time is ticking. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.